this week's video is going to be a little different. I decided to make a super basic embroidery terms and walkthrough video for people who, you know, don't really know too much about embroidery and want to get into it or just people who want to know what I'm talking about when I say some stuff on this channel. I know when I was first starting out there were a lot of embroidery videos but it felt like they were teaching to people who already knew a little bit so I wanted to make a super basic version while showing you the process. So what you just saw me do was take out the bobbin case and oil my machine. This is part of your daily basic care and when I was starting out with just my single needle I had no idea you were supposed to do this every time that you used your machine and basically every single day. So yeah, there's your first tip. And now you see I'm brushing this bottom part out where the bobbin stays to make sure there's no loose dust or loose thread or anything like that. When you embroider there is actually two threads. There's the bobbin and then the normal embroidery thread. The bobbin thread is basically the bottom side of your embroidery. It's the thread that stitches on the underside of whatever you're embroidering. Stabilizer is basically fabric that your thread adheres to that gives the embroidery structure and well stability. In this project, I'm going to use just cut away, which is like the name suggests, you cut it away. There's also tear away. This one you tear and whatever's left comes off in the wash. Peel and stick is a good option for floating your item, which means instead of hooping it, it just lays on top of the hoop and is adhered with something sticky like the peel and stick or like this basting adhesive. I preferred the floating method to hooping when I had my single needle machine, hands down. There's another type of stabilizer you can get called this no-show mesh that is lightweight cutaway. Since I do have the magnetic uh, hooping system by Hoopmaster, I will use that, but you can use the normal hoops that come with your machine. So it's just a little bit trickier to have to put the stabilizer and the garment in a normal hoop. It's just a little bit trickier for me. Another system that you can try are the fast frames that you'll basically just use either peel and stick or cut away or tear away with a basing adhesive to float your items. This is me just repairing the Mighty Hoop system to put my stabilizer in my bottom hoop. Before I put the sweatshirt on the board, I marked it with an air soluble marker where I wanted the middle of my design to be and I tried to match that up with the middle of the hoop as well as the middle of the board where it has the little line. Um, so yeah, so I tried to match that up. I think I needed to move my hoop up a notch on the Mighty Hoop board so I'll try that next time. The Mighty Hoop isn't always perfect, so I'm trying to just pull out any sort of extra fabric and make it as tight and taut as possible. My new machine is a multi-needle six needle machine so basically that means I can have six colors going in one design without having to change colors. The single needle can only do one color at a time so yeah big upgrade here. Okay so digitizing. Digitizing is another thing that I had no idea before this. So in order to embroider a design you have to make it into basically a computer language that your specific embroidery machine reads. There are some standard file types but some machines are different. So this is me designing what I needed to get digitized. The digitizing basically means the design is broken down into stitches and the file tells the machine how many and where to put the stitches. I usually get my designs digitized on a website called Z Digitizing. They have a super fast turnaround and are super inexpensive. They also are super helpful with any changes you need to make. Um, I've had a few bad interactions and instances of digitizing on Etsy, so I decided to do a company do the job instead. 
They also have non-custom pre-made designs that you can check out, but also check out Etsy. Um, they have some fun ones there too, but they may not come in your exact machine's file, so be aware of that when you're looking on Etsy. This is an example of a PDF of what they'll send to you for your stitch file, and you'll get this across all digitizers, but it basically tells you what the machine is going to do with the colors. This is a big thing to be aware of. Your hoop size and your embroidery field size are not one and the same. Your hoop size is bigger than the amount of space available to you to embroider. For example, this hoop is eight by 13 inches. You cannot embroider a design that is eight by 13 inches on this. I don't remember the exact embroidery field of this, but always check your hoops embroidery field and do a trace of your design so you don't ruin your machine or a bad design you can't use. What I'm doing here is probably not going to apply to a lot of people, but this is a support arm from Mighty Hoop that I'm basically just putting on to hold extra weight from any sort of bigger frames that I'm going to use on the machine. Now it's time to load the machine. Uh, someone graciously told me on a last video that the warning sign on the Mighty Hoop goes up, so thank you! You also want to make sure when you're loading the machine that you don't have any fabric clumped under the embroidery field. You want to make sure that everything's cleared away so you're not accidentally um, embroidering the top of the shirt to the bottom of the shirt. So now I'm going to perform that trace function that I was talking about, basically just making sure that I'm not going to accidentally cause a needle to hit my hoop or damage my machine. And here I'm just moving my laser over to the cross that I made earlier where I centered it. And my machine can do this, not every machine can do this, but it just makes sure that I am starting exactly where I want to on my field. Real quick, I just wanna ask that if you found this video helpful or like this type of content, please let me know by commenting or subscribing. It lets me know what sort of content you all like and what I should keep doing. Turned down the speed on my machine, but here's what it sounds like going at 700 stitches per minute in three, two, one. Finishing the embroidery and loud sound alert in three, two, one. All that's left to do is to cut the cut away. So because I'm just gonna be using this as my own personal sweatshirt, I'm not gonna get like too crazy with how I cut it away. But all you gotta do is take some scissors and cut it off and it'll soften up in the wash, so it's not too bad.
If you liked the color threads that I use and want to know what number of Madeira thread they are, I'll tell you right now. So the first one I used was 1816. This is cute pink color right here. Super cute, super peachy. Then the purple was 1911. Then 1895. Then 1624. And then finally 1820. Actually, just kidding. 1645 is the last one. The last thing I'm going to talk about is fill stitch versus satin stitch. This design was a combo of satin and fill. The satin was the border and the letters were fill stitch. I liked this because I felt it gave it some cute dimension. So yeah, so you can see there's the satin stitch versus the fill. But here's the full on satin stitch design for comparison. The postpartum glow sweatshirt is pretty much all satin stitch. So you can see that's what it looks like versus that. And here it is on. Thanks for watching. See you next time. So sample mail 